what's up guys, Simon Johnson from Soccer Mag here. And this week we are doing game week 22 predictions. Um, last week I tried to get into the betting and I think this week I'm going to try it again. It was a bit easier because the game week, game week 21 was split over two weekends. So I could focus a bit more on the five games from each weekend. But this week I'm going to give it a crack again and let me know once again how I do. Um, I think last week I didn't do too badly. I got 6 out of 10 results correct. I didn't actually put any money on it because I didn't, you know, like I said, I didn't really know. I just gave the predictions. But this week I'm going to try again, and I think this week I might put some money on to see how I actually do. And I'll let you guys know how that happens um, or what the results of that is. Um, the first game of this weekend... It's okay. It's not like not too great, but not too bad. It's Nottingham Forest versus Arsenal at Forest. Now, looking at the odds, unsurprisingly, Arsenal are clear favourites here. Arsenal in their last game absolutely destroyed Crystal Palace five 0 Palace were completely beaten. I think after it went two 0 they had given up. They had almost given up. Martinelli played exceptionally well, got two goals. Gabriel played really well. There's just, I think Arsenal, I think I said last week as well that I thought after the break, Arsenal are going to come mentally refreshed and they're going to be ready to score goals. And they showed it. Forrest played Brentford and I predicted a draw. And I was pretty close to that. I was 3-2 to Brentford. I think Brentford got a, got a relatively late goal to go 3-2 up. But I think we know that Arsenal should win this game. Forest have been good at home this season. They've got a couple good results. They've put teams under pressure, the bigger teams, when they've played against them. But I think Arsenal look like they're going into some great form at the moment. They've set a good platform with their win last week. Forest 6.80 odds for a win, 4.70 for a draw, and 1.45 for an Arsenal win. Personally, I'm going to stay away from that. I think Arsenal are going to be clear winners. Um, I'm going to go for a 3-1 Arsenal win. I don't... For Arsenal to win 5-0 against Palace last week and then throw, it, throw the momentum away against Forest, I think that'll be extremely disappointing. And I just look at 1.45 and I don't think there's enough in that for me to put any money on it. And 6.80 for Forest, I don't trust Forest enough for that. Moving on to the second game, it's a way more of an even game. It is... Fulham versus Everton at Fulham. Now, Fulham, looking at their past few results, they haven't won many games. They've got a big win against, or a massive win results-wise, not necessarily scoreline-wise, against Arsenal earlier in the year. And then they beat Rotherham in the FA Cup, which doesn't really, you know, they should beat Rotherham. The rest of their results, have they've lost to Liverpool twice. They've lost to Chelsea. They got beaten 3-0 by Bournemouth. They haven't gotten great results, but I would say Fulham haven't been playing badly. If you look at their performance against Chelsea, last 10 minutes of that game, Chelsea were under extreme pressure. You know, they were fighting to keep Fulham out. And against Liverpool, both of their games in the League Cup semi-final, first leg, they went to Anfield, the 1-0 up for most of the game, just you know, lost that 2-1, was still in the game 100% until the final whistle. Second leg, which was last night, um, Liverpool went 1-0 up early, but had dominated the first half. Uh, Possession-wise, Liverpool in complete control. Second half, Liverpool started well, but Fulham causing problems for most of the game. Pereira hit the post. Um, you know, they equalised, and then the last 10 minutes really was all Fulham. It was Liverpool holding out. And looking at those performances, I can't say that Fulham, you know, looking at their form of four losses in their past six games or whatever, that isn't true to the nature of their performances. Going to Everton, now Everton are not the favourites going into this game, uh, looking at the odds. It is 2.9 for an Everton away win, uh, 3.4 for a draw and 2.45 for a Fulham home win. I also don't think there's that much of a gap between the two teams. I think Everton have been a really difficult team to beat this season and they've gotten good results. I personally, 
this is the kind of game I can see Everton going and winning. They've done it multiple times this season. But there's just something about Fulham, you know, I've had to watch them multiple times. I think in the past month or so, six weeks, Liverpool have played Fulham three times and every single time it was on a knife's edge. So I think I'm going to back Fulham on this one, 2-1. I like the 2.45 for Fulham win at home. I think that's quite a solid return considering they, like I said, results haven't been in their favour, but they're not a bad team by any means. I think 2.45 is solid for a Fulham win. I'm going to go for 2-1 Fulham. But it won't be easy. Everton are a difficult team to beat. Next up, we have Luton versus Brighton at Luton. And again, there's a clear favourite on the odds here. Luton at home have been decent this season. It's where they've gotten their points. They've drawn to Liverpool, just lost to Arsenal, just lost to City. I think I've mentioned those games before. But I think those are a good indicator of how Luton show up at home. They're very compact. They, they give you time and space on the ball because they don't believe you can beat them. They want you to cross it into the box. They've got some big, tall defenders. They've got great athletes in their team. On the counter, they're a serious threat. I think we saw against Liverpool. Liverpool probably had 80% possession that game. But on the counter, they are, you know, I think it was... Ogbene versus Trent, one of those games where Trent could barely handle him. Um, I wouldn't say that this is going to be a walkover for Brighton. Although, looking at the odds, it is 1.68 for a Brighton win. It is 4.2 for a draw and 4.6 for a Luton win. Brighton haven't been in the greatest form. You know, I think this season, I've, I've said it before, you don't know what team is going to turn up. I think we know on paper Brighton are an amazing team. Roberto De Zerbi is a great manager. Their style of play is amazing. But, you know, you don't know whether they're going to pitch up at Everton and get punished. You don't know whether they're going to play Aston Villa and destroy Aston Villa. And you don't know if they're going to play against Wolves at home and draw 0-0 like they did last week. So for me to say that Brighton will be clear winners in this game, I can't, I can't say that. I Looking at that... I do know, I'm, I must also say, like I know Brighton are the stronger team. Brighton are the better team. Luton only have a few points in the league for a reason because they're not one of the better sides. But I think Luton at home will be difficult for Brighton because Brighton have shown this season they're struggling to break down low-block teams. So I'm looking at that draw of 4.2, and I think that could be a nice bet. 4.2 for a draw between Brighton and Luton at Luton. I think I might go with that. I think that's a solid call. It's just, if the odds were a bit more, I don't know, 1.68 for Brighton win just doesn't really do anything for me. And I don't think they're going, I don't think form-wise they should be as clear favourites as they are. So I'm going to go for a nil-nil draw because I can see Luton keeping Brighton out. And I don't think Brighton, I mean, I don't think Luton will necessarily be going all out to score against Brighton. So I'm going to go for a 0-0 for odds of 4.2. Next up, we have Crystal Palace for Sheffield United. And this is, a, I think, a difficult game because Crystal Palace are in terrible form. They look completely broken. They look shattered. Roy Hodgson is complaining about the quality of his squad every week. Every week they play... He complains, and I think tactically as well, they're not playing. They're playing extremely negatively. There's just an air of negativity around Crystal Palace at the moment. You know, they have, a, they have exciting players. At the start of the season, they look to be a great team. Um, but as it's gone on, something's gone wrong there. I don't think, Roy, if I'm honest, I think Roy Hodgson's days are numbered. Looking at the Arsenal game, they, like I said, they gave up. They... And then after the game, Roy comes and says his team isn't good enough. Basically, they, they can't play a certain way. They can't play attacking football because they don't have good players, that kind of stuff. And I think as soon as the manager starts having conversations like that at all, let alone regularly, there are serious problems behind the scenes. I just... And the fact, you know, this is also similar to the Brighton routine where Palace are undoubtedly a better team than Sheffield. 
the odds reflect that. Crystal Palace, 1.644 win, 3.75 for a draw, and 5.6 for Sheffield win. I don't see Sheffield winning at Palace by any means. But I just don't think Palace are very good at the moment. I think they're struggling. There's a lot of internal problems there. Sheffield as well. You know, they seeming to be there seeming to be something slightly different. Um, something slightly different about Sheffield these past couple of weeks. Uh, it's a, it's a difficult one because the odds. It's dif- I think this week it's a difficult one to bet because the favourites this week. There's nothing really enticing about the odds for the favourites this week. The the best one I think is probably the Fulham, you know, the Fulham bet. But all the others are around the one to one and a half, one point six range, and I don't really like those kind of bets from my limited experience. I think though I'm not going to bet on this game because I don't think it's nice. I don't I don't like the what I'm looking at. But I think Palace will win this game. I'm going to go for a two one Palace. I know what I've said about their negativity but it's not going to be it's not going to be a blow it's not going to be a walkover i think it's going to be tight palace are struggling but i don't like that one those that 1.64 so uh, yeah i'm going to go for a 2-1 palace win but like i said there are huge problems there at the the fifth game of the weekend is an, a nice one it's an exciting game um, it is Aston Villa versus Newcastle at Aston Villa. And I think this is going to be a great game. Newcastle in their last game against City, you know, a KDB cameo away from a great win. Anthony Gordon played really well. Villa, at home this season, have been spectacular. It's the reason why they're so high up the table. They don't really, they don't lose at home. Newcastle have... There's also seems to be some sort of something. Obviously, they're struggling with financial fair play, and apparently they need to sell players. Bayern Munich have been interested in Kieran Trippier. Almiron's been linked away. Um, you know, we, we didn't really know what's going on in the back there, but I think this will be a tight game. 1.94 for Villa win, 4 for a draw, and 3.5 for Newcastle win. I like 1.944 Villa win. That's you nearly doubling, nearly doubling your money, if I'm correct. At the home side, who I think overall have been a way better team than Newcastle this season. Newcastle squad is depleted. They have two of their star players unsettled and potentially leaving the club. So I think a 3-2 Villa win at 1.94 odds, I think I like that result. That's what I'm going to go with this week. Next up, we have Tottenham versus Brentford. Again, another clear favourite in the odds. Brentford beat Forest last week. Not the greatest of performances, but Ivan Tony's back and he scored. And that, I think, is the biggest boost they could have. They are missing Brian and Bremo and they are missing Johan Visser a lot. But they got through that game. It was Ivan Tony's first game back, you know. You take, you take the three points and move on. I think Spurs, they look to be much better than they were. Players are coming back. Madison's back in training. That is a huge boost for them. If he can get any sort of minutes in his legs this weekend at the FA Cup and then potentially be ready for next week against Brentford, even to play a half or 30 minutes, I think he can make a massive difference. I think as fans, we've almost forgotten how impressive he was for Spurs in those first 10, 12, 15 games. Before his injury, he was one of the best creators in the Premier League. His levels were up there with KDB. His assists, his goals, just his overall influence on Spurs was, you know, we forgot Harry Kane had left for those first couple weeks, those first couple months. He will be a huge boost. And here, the odds, you know, 1.594 Spurs win. I can understand why they're favourites. 4.4 for a draw and 5.2 for a Brentford win. Despite Ivan Tony being back, I still don't think Brentford are great at the moment. Um, obviously, he adds a whole new threat, set pieces, both in the box and taking them himself. His overall play, 
a huge boost to Brentford, but I just don't see Spurs losing this one. I know they don't have Son, but Kulisevsky has really stepped up. He has been a really important player going forward for them. Richarlison seems to be doing much better. Brennan Johnson can probably take a bit more responsibility, but is still not doing well, is still not doing badly. Fun defend being back, you know. Yeah, I think their team is a lot more solid now. And the potential inclusion of Madison in there, I can see why Spurs are clear favourites. So I'm also going to stay away from this one. I don't like the odds of 1.59. I don't. I try to do a bit better than that. Um, but I'm going to go with a 3-1 Spurs win. I think Spurs should take this one comfortably. Um, yeah, I think Romero and Van de Fen will deal with Tony. He might score a goal, but I don't see him de deciding the game like he did against Forrest. Going into the next game, this game's odds are ridiculous. It is Man City versus Burnley at Man City. Now, let me know if this is normal, but it is 1.11 for a Man City win, 9.8 for a draw, and 23 for a Burnley win. I don't know if that's normal, but that is insanely high. Doesn't mean I'm going to back Burnley, but I don't think I've ever seen a number that high before. Um, in betting, obviously. Uh, I think, you know, you have to go for a City win. Yeah, I don't... KDB's back. Haaland's coming close to being back. There's nothing really more to say. Burnley, one of the worst teams in the league this season. For the first half an hour, they might put up a fight, but I think this could get really messy. Just don't... There's a reason I'm assuming why it's 23 for a Burnley win. They're basically saying it's impossible. So... I'm going to go for the 4-0 Man City win. I honestly don't think I need to explain much about this game. Just KDB being back enough is more than enough of an explanation to why I think City will win. Yeah, I'm going to move on from that one because the next game is pretty good. Not necessarily odds-wise, but it is Liverpool versus Chelsea at Anfield. And this is almost a preview of the League Cup final now that Liverpool are going to be playing Chelsea in the League Cup final I think 25th of Feb so it is 1.65 for a Liverpool win 4.3 for a draw and 4.7 for a Chelsea win I you know 4.7 for a Chelsea win I don't see them being maybe it's because I'm trying to be neutral and objective but I don't think Liverpool are they, sh they should be favourites but to have Chelsea at almost 5 you know, three, they, right now they're three, odds are three times, well not three times better, but, you know, they have odds of 4.7 to 1.65. I don't think Chelsea are favourites by that margin by any means. They are starting to play a lot better. Players are starting to find rhythm. And if you look at the last, can't tell the exact number, but if I look at the past six, seven Maybe even eight times Liverpool have played each other. Liverpool have played Chelsea in the Premier League. Draws. Nil nils, two twos, two two at the start of the season, one ones, nil nils, two twos. They're very rarely, or I don't know, for the past two, three, four years, has been a dominant result in this fixture in the Premier League and in finals previously, and just in general. Historically, very rarely is one team dominant over the other, despite how well they're doing throughout the season. I, Liverpool at 1.65, I think I'm going to stay away from betting on this game because I'm a Liverpool fan and I'd prefer not to jinx it. I'm pretty superstitious when it comes to those kind of things. But I think Liverpool, whenever Liverpool play Chelsea at Stamford Bridge or at Anfield, there's always one of the teams is on a good run of form going into it, and it's a draw. Liverpool are favourites, and they're on an unbelievable run of form. They have only lost one game in the Premier League this season. They are scoring goals. They've just made it to the League Cup final. They've just beaten Bournemouth, who are one of the informed teams in the Premier League, 4-0. But we've seen this before. Chelsea come to Anfield, 2-2, or 1-1. Very few chances. Liverpool struggle to create against Chelsea. And it's regardless of who the manager is, um, regardless of who the players that are playing. S um, 
Mane, Salah and Firmino always struggled to create consistent chances against Liverpool and score, blow them away. Now it's Nunez, Jota, Gakpo and Diaz, no Salah. They've still been scoring goals, but I just don't see it being a, a walkover game. Um, I'm going to go for a 2-1 Liverpool win. I think I have to back them at Anfield. Very rarely, they, you know, they, had, they haven't lost at Anfield in ages. Chelsea are also, they, whenever they show glimpses of a positive you know, improvement, they are very, they, they've shown that they can drop straight back. I still think Chelsea are better, better now than they were two or three months ago. I think they have found something there where their consistency is building slightly. I think their beliefs building slightly. So I'm, I'm going to go for 2-1 Liverpool to be conservative. I could easily see this. If you're wanting to bet on it, I think 4.3 odds for a draw, looking at this fixture historically, is a good shout. Like I said, probably in the, out of the last 10 matches they've played, I don't know the exact number, but looking at seven, eight draws. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that game. Moving on to the second last game of the weekend, we have West Ham versus Bournemouth. And this is a, a difficult one, I'd say, because I mentioned, like I just mentioned now, Bournemouth, I think, have won six of their last eight games in the Premier League, or six of their last nine now, considering the Liverpool loss. They're one of the informed teams in the Premier League. In, along the way, they've beaten Fulham 3-0, beaten Man United. They've got some huge results in that run. And West Ham are climbing up the table now. They are starting to play much better. Kudus might be back now that Ghana have been knocked out of AFCON, which is a huge boost for them. It's unfortunate for him on a personal level, but he is, along with Jared Bowen, their best attacker. So that maybe changes things up. West Ham at home are very good. The thing about it, I, I, looking at Liverpool's game versus Bournemouth, that first half it was a very even game. Bournemouth were almost setting the tempo of the game. They were countering very well, even building up very well when they had possession of the ball. West Ham of 2.34 odds of a win, 3.75 for a draw, and 2.8 for a Bournemouth win. I don't know. I think I might have to go for a West Ham win here. I kind of have a feeling when in doubt back the home side, and I think West Ham have shown this season they are capable of beating teams that are in better form than them. And 2.34, I think those are pretty good odds, even though they're the worst of the three options. 2.34, I don't think is a bad, you know, a bad outcome by any means. I think it will be tight. I think there will be goals. I'm going to go for a 3-2 West Ham win. Because both teams I know will be on the front foot and both teams will want to score goals. They've both scored a lot of goals this season, considering. And yeah, that's what I'm thinking. West Ham, 3-2 win. Now for the final game of the weekend. Wolves versus United at Wolves. And United are almost slight favourites in this. Wolves have been good this season. I think a way draw against Brighton in the last round, solid result. 2.75 for a Wolves win, 3.60 for a draw, and 2.45 for a United win. I, you know, I know Onana has come under a lot of criticism this season, but I think he is still their best goalkeeper. I think he is still a very good goalkeeper. He has made quite a few mistakes this season, but he has also been under a microscope, and every mistake he's made has been amplified almost like he's the goalkeeper equivalent of Darwin Nunez. Um, we forget about the good stuff he does because it's funny and it's easy to see the bad stuff he does. I, you know, I think United have to win this game. This is the kind of game that if they want to show progress and if Eric Ten Hag wants to you know, show that he's the right man for the job, you have to go away to Wolves and win this game. Liverpool did it. They struggled. That first half, Liverpool played Wolves. It was incredibly difficult. Wolves are a good team, you know. And in the first time, first game of the season for United and Wolves, they played each other. Wolves should have won that game. I think we can all agree, you know, Wolves dominated, were unlucky. I think looking at this, though, I might go for a... I might go for a... 
a cheeky Wolves 2.75 win, like odds of a win, I think I might go for a Wolves win. I don't know. I know I just said United should win, and I believe that United should win. I just have a feeling that Wolves could do something here. Like I said, they're not a bad team at all. When they play against the top six sides, they play well. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 Wolves win at home against United. Just some, some feeling I have that United are going to be missing some players. They're not going to be really hitting the top form that they have. Or I think what we've seen a lot of times on United, a lot of times from United this season, they have 20 minutes where they're a brilliant team and then they switch off and then something happens. You know, I think against, if you look at the Bournemouth game where they got beaten 3-0, for large portions of that game, they were in control and you think to yourself, they should win this game. They go 1-0 down, you think to yourself, they'll still win this game. But there's something about this team that they just don't come through. They have fought back a couple times a season, but they just don't seem to control games for 90 minutes. Or they don't seem, it's difficult to do that, obviously, but they just Something about this team is just mentally they aren't as strong as they should be. So I'm going to go for 2-1 Wolves win. 2.75 odds. I think that could have been an interesting call, guys. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Good luck for your betting this weekend or the next week. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.